So anyway, um, here's a little bit about myself, if you don't know much about me. And uh, I was born in California, so uh, I kind of, I was made in California myself. But uh, made in California, there's uh, some of my information, uh, my email and my hashtag Chef Gary, and that's also on uh, Instagram, so. And a little background, I always uh, throw in my old years of Disney, and I see some Disney people on the uh, talk tonight. Um, I was with them for about 10 years, and uh, I rarely wore that chef coat. That was my chef coat after I won uh, the Culinary Olympics, but we did those uh, big uh, gingerbread houses for years. And uh, then... Uh, well, the other claim to fame is doing all the cheesecakes on Golden Girls and uh, the picture with me in the blue suit. I'm in uh, Mae West's former apartment and uh, the gal there, uh, Kimberly, she lives there and she does these salons and I always bring a cheesecake. So the uh, uh, I just came back from Oak Park, Illinois, where uh, uh, Betty White was born and uh, they had a big celebration in January for her 100th birthday that she didn't make, but it was called um, Act Like Betty or Be Like Betty, I guess it was. And they did a full page story on myself on the cheesecakes and all the food that I created on that show. I worked at the studios. I did a lot of different things. And I didn't think the Golden Girls was that great of a show. When I saw the pilot, um, the script, they wanted me to do a, a wedding cake because Blanche gets married and gets left at the altar. So I did a wedding cake and about six months later, they decided to pick up the show. And uh, I worked on it for a number of years and made some crazy food for that show. It wasn't just cheesecakes, but uh, cheesecakes is what they're known for. And um, I just got back last week also from uh, the South of France. I take uh, groups to the South of France and that's the villa. We live in uh, a little village in Sayon. And we used to um, live in Julia Child's former house for about 20 years. In the past 10, I've been doing it in that villa. And uh, there's the MS Euro Dam. I worked on uh, Holland America ships for almost 10 years, world cruises, grand voyages, things like that around the world. So I uh, um, went to 118 countries in the years that I worked on uh, the ships. What I did is I would jump on and off the ships anywhere I really wanted to. It was a rough life. And I could bring somebody with me. They would fly me to the location. I would do market tours in the villages that we would go to and um, do cooking classes on board and create menus for the high-end restaurants. So that is uh, not, it, it stopped about two years before COVID. So I uh, saw a lot of the world that I'm going back to now. And my morning show life. Um, I, uh, in fact, I was just at WGN Chicago. I work out there. And uh, since COVID hit, I do a lot from the house here. And uh, my uh, first national show was Mike and Maddie in the 90s. And that's the one on the top. And then uh, Home and Family. I was on that show on Hallmark for a number of years. And the one with the cameraman with the UCLA guy, that is uh, San Diego, um, the CBS station. And I also do Tampa, Florida. So I'm now all over the place. So that's my life. And uh, Made in California is my, I think, 15th book, maybe 14th. I have to count them. Um, I uh, created this book because. I was doing a story for USA Today on a lot of different um, restaurants and, and things, and, and were they still at the first location? And for instance, the first McDonald's is not located there anymore. Um, the building is kind of there, but it's not. But uh, the first Taco Bell, the building we'll talk about later. But I was creating this list of places that started in California that were restaurants, uh, fast food, diners, burger joints, and things like that. And they made it in California and went nationwide or pretty close to nationwide. And uh, I teach at Purdue University in Indiana. And while I was there, I was on the highway, on the, the, the highway going north from Indianapolis. And I noticed they have a list on what restaurants and what gas stations and things like that are at the next off ramp. 
And there was about 14 location uh, restaurants or places to eat next. And out of the 14, 12 were from uh, California. So I thought, wow, this could be a story. And it went from story to a book. And there's over 100. But in my book, I've got about 50. And uh, we'll talk about uh, the second volume later on. So what I did is every location has a title page. And the title page will have something to the effect of where the exact address, when it was open, the founders, what's there today if you go to that address, and what currently that company has. And so this is the Sonora, Sonora Cafe. It became the El Cholo Spanish Cafe. Uh, today it's called El Cholo. The original location is in Los Angeles. It opened in 1923. Uh, a lot of people think the Western Avenue location is the original, but it's not. That was uh, their third location. And uh, their first location has a uh, uh, California modern woodwork place. Currently, when this book was at print, it had, they had six El Chilo restaurants, three upscale restaurants in the family portfolio, and it's privately family owned. Uh, what's interesting is uh, they're expanding to Utah now. So, um, and they're in their sixth or seventh generation is working for that company. Name change for the better. Uh, let's see what I mean by that. These companies changed names. Um, the uh, Vandy Camps was originally Saratoga Chips and Vandy Camps isn't around anymore except their frozen food line. With Vandy Camps, you can also uh, tell somebody's age. Do they remember the windmill calf? Uh, restaurants, or do they remember a, uh, a Vandy Camp lady with the the little Holland outfit? Or uh, in the supermarket, my grandmother uh, worked for them, and so did my aunt. And uh, here's Vandy Camps. Um, this location, beautiful little Vandy Camp. They really put a lot into it. The color picture that I have in the center, that building is. In fact, I was just watching uh, the news about a month ago and a car went through that front window, but that's what's left of the last Vandy Camp building that we know of. And that is over by USC. And the Vandy Camp uh, production facility that is the large building on the bottom area, that's a college now, but uh, they saved the building. I, I'm into uh, saving buildings and not uh, destroying them. And that's another reason why I do a lot of conservancy stuff. I think we tear down too much. Sonora Cafe, that turned into, and here's some pictures, El Cello, which all of you uh, just saw. And there's uh, the Corona Del Mar location and the uh, Western Avenue location. Hinky Dinks in 1934. Uh, a lot of people don't know what the original name was because they know it by Trader Vic's. This location is not there anymore. This was Beverly Hills at the Hilton. A lot of the high-end Hilton store locations had them. There are some, a few here and there. Uh, I thought Chicago was still open. In fact, when I was in Chicago this past weekend, I noticed it wasn't. So um, it said temporarily closed or no, permanently closed. But there is one in Atlanta, Georgia at the Hilton Atlanta. McDonald Brothers Barbecue, uh, 1940. Uh, I think the McDonald's story is fascinating because a lot of people think somebody else created the chain, but it was a, a Brothers. It was a barbecue stand. And um, the Brothers came out from back east to work in the film industry, and they really didn't like it. So they bought a theater in Glendora, California. That went belly up, but they had all these uniforms for uh, the girls to be... Um, what do you call them, uh, usherettes. So they took those uniforms and turned them into the car hop uniforms. The car hop was a problem because the girls kind of hung around the guys that drove their cars in and they uh, were not replacing a car with another uh, car. So McDonald's wasn't making that much money. So what they decided to, they scrapped the whole idea stopped the car hop and made you get out of your car and get your McDonald burger. And there's the last original looking one and that's in uh, uh, Downey, California. And uh, this is um, 
the only one in the chain that also makes the apple pie is by frying them. The rest of them still bake them. And this does have a drive through They put a drive through in the back and uh, you don't, uh, it didn't hurt the building when they did that. But that's a great location to go. The blimp, that's another chain uh, that people kind of look at and they can't figure out what it is, but it turned into being Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr. was based in Anaheim for a, a lot of years with uh, Carl Karcher owning it. And then they bought Hardee's. Hardee's uh, and Carl's merged. Hardee's was an East Coast brand. And now they're in Tennessee. So their corporate headquarters are not. And their original location was just back up that. This was a large location, but their original location was just a little um, a hot dog uh, cart downtown LA. And then uh, Snowbird and Burt's Ice Cream, two companies. This is the original location of Snowbirds and it's still operating, but it is, um, if you look, it says frozen food by Robbins. Uh, Mr. Robin owned uh, Snowbird and Mr. Baskin owned Burt's and they both were brother-in-laws. They came from back East and they started one of the largest ice cream companies of the world, Baskin Robbins. And uh, they did this uh, look of a, uh, an A-frame for a short time. The uh, one on the left is uh, from Escondido, California. It's not there anymore, but the one on the right is in Gardena, California. That is still there. So, and then we just lost Hot Dog on a Stick. I have to go out there and see what's going on uh, because the company tore down the building. They said they're going to redo it. And I did see plans for them to make it larger. Uh, it was originally called Party Puffs, and we can't find a picture with it being Party Puffs, but uh, it's on Muscle Beach right there in uh, Venice, uh, Santa Monica area, and Hot Dog on a Stick. And then uh, the snack shop, this building, half of it's still there. What I mean by that is they've expanded and changed it. Today, it's a Ruby's, but uh, this was called Coco's, and it's in uh, Corona del Mar right when you hit... Um, this the PCH from uh, Newport Beach. And then the big donut drive-in. Everybody thinks that Randy's is what it was, but it wasn't. Um, it was called the Big Donut, and there was a, a lot of them, a lot like uh, less than a dozen, 1953. Here's some of them, and some are still uh, operating. There's uh, uh, the Big Donut number two. There's Kindles. They were all on corners, and Randy's, is the name now that everyone associates with because it's over by LAX. The Randy's, they have locations in uh, Korea and Torrance and they've got uh, El, El, El Segundo. They've got a, a, a large amount. They don't have the big Randy donut in all of them. They do have a smaller donut in some of them. But I was talking to the owners. I said, you know, have you thought of taking over one of the old locations? And they said that it would be too difficult to redo them. So they just have their one place where Andy's Donut right there in Inglewood by LAX. Danny's Donuts 1953 turned into, that was the original location in Lakewood. And it turned into Denny's. And uh, you look at the Denny's uh, uh, building. It's not technically take off the word Denny's off of the building and it could be any other store. And we'll talk about buildings and what they have changed also. These are things you thought were gone. And uh, a and Root Beer, 1919. Um, the little plaque in the corner, that's embedded in the sidewalk in Lodi, California, where this black and white picture was. If you go to Lodi, California, and you uh, go to the a and Root Beer stand, they have one and they say they're number one, but it's about a half a mile from the original location where it opened up in 1919. And uh, it was funny, I was there and they have like a little museum there. I think I was there on a Tuesday night and I said, I'll, I'll take, um, if you recall a &W, they had mama burger, papa burger, baby burger or something like that. So I uh, said I would take a, 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 a papa burger and he said two of them. And I said, no, only one. And he said, no, two. And I said, no, one. He says, well, it's Tuesday, two for one. So you get two of them. Well, I didn't want to, but he kept trying to give me two. 
So I uh, only went with one. Uh, Orange Julius is another one that a lot of people think are gone. They um, Orange Julius, downtown LA, it started. And it was fascinating how this, this company started. He um, was, he, he bought sun-kissed oranges that were blemished, that weren't good enough to be sun-kissed. And that's how he started. And the Dairy Queen Company um, was not founded in California, but they're still, they're owned by the same company. And then we have uh, Bob's Pantry. That is Bob's big boy. A lot of people think they're gone. There's a few locations here, but they're more of uh, back east. What's interesting about this is they have a, um, uh, they didn't franchise the company. They only franchised a recipe or an idea at the time. So that's where they um, would do it that way. It was the same thing with Kentucky Fried Chicken. Um, I've been researching a Dinah's Chicken over by LA Airport, and they originally had Colonel Sanders come out and teach them how to make the chicken, and they paid him four cents a, a chicken that he sold. So um, you didn't do the whole concept. You just did a recipe here and there. And then we have Swinson's Ice Cream. Now, this was one of my favorites. Every city in town had a Swinson's Ice Cream. There's three locations left. This one is the original location in San Francisco. Uh, the daughter, Patty Swinson, I had lunch with her a couple times, and uh, she gave me a lot of information. And when Swinson's uh, was a uh, oh, uh, on every street corner, I mean, every city had one, they were very profitable. And today there's three, like I said, but there's about 300 of them in Asia. And they're very popular there. They had a big problem after they became franchisees. The franchisees uh, wanted to keep them the same, but the head corporate offices, not Mr. Swenson, he had sold it at that point. They wanted uh, to have uh, hamburgers and have a grill and all this. And uh, Mr. Swenson himself said, if you look at that store in that, that looks kind of busy, there's only three people in there. That's how you don't need a lot of room. You just needed room for the manufacturing of the ice cream, which was on the left-hand side, and the sales. And you don't need people to sit around and eat. They can leave with their ice cream cone. That's, he didn't even make banana splits. They took too long. So it was scoops of ice cream in cups and cones and hot fudge sauce or a sauce of some sort. And that's about it and some whipped cream. So uh, the uh, corporate headquarters decided to take out the machinery and... Uh, you, Swinson's had to buy their ice cream from one manufacturing plant out of Arizona. So a lot of the company uh, not owned stores, they decided to start closing because people wanted the good Swinson's ice cream. So that's what happened with them. Pioneer Chicken's another one. There's only two left in Los Angeles. And uh, that plate of chicken, it's a unique taste that uh, if you've had it, you know what it is. And I go into detail of what happened. But it was called Pioneer chicken because it was next door to Pioneer Market on Sunset Boulevard is when it opened. And House of Pies. Uh, we've got one left and another one is being built right now and I over on the west side, but this one is on Vermont. There's three in Texas, Houston area, but uh, they're kind of like an offshoot, uh, but they're, they look like that. But if you go around and you see the House of Pies buildings around Los Angeles, you know what they are when you see them. You go, that was a house of pies. And I, there's one on Ventura Boulevard in the Valley that is a, a, a coin store. So I look, I go, oh, they used to make pies there. Red Onion, that's another one that uh, there was a lot of, and I go into a lot of detail in the book about what, what happened. But the original location was in uh, Inglewood, California. There's one location left. He calls himself the original Red Onion. And uh, it's the sun that started it. And that's in uh, Rolling Hills, Palos Verdes Peninsula area. And what's fascinating, if you do go there, uh, take time and look around his, the walls. He has a lot of history of different restaurants. He's got a lot of the sketchings from the Brown Derby, the original Brown Derby. So these are still there at their original location. Dupars, the number one, and there's only one store left, and that is uh, at uh, uh, Farmer's Market. 
Uh, the ice cream there, Snowbirds, that's the original location on Lake in Pasadena. Lowry's. Lowry's was at that location. It went across the street, then it went back. So it, it's back to its original location. If you haven't been in Lowry's, right before COVID, they uh, did a whole redo, and it's a really beautiful location. The original Foster's Freeze is in uh, Inglewood, California, and there's a few of them left here and there. But uh, that's one of the w pictures from the uh, that location. And then we have Pink's Hot Dogs. And uh, the, of Pink's Hot Dogs, that's their original location. I didn't know until I was researching, they have about 12, 14 locations, mostly in theme parks around the country. And Mr. and Mrs. Pink, the uh, brother and sister, um, of the founders are some of the nicest, sweetest people I've ever met. And uh, I've been to a couple events with them. And then some more original places, Tommy's Burgers uh, there. Uh, they went 24 hours. I found this out while I was doing research. Uh, they're over there in uh, Rampart area of Los Angeles. Uh, the reason why they went 24 hours is there was a small plane crash in uh, a few years after they opened. And uh, they had workers from the city working on the power lines and things like that, and they had no place to eat. So Tommy stayed open that night and everybody kept coming. Uh, Party Puffs, I've got to take this out because that was a hot dog on a stick that uh, is no longer there. I, I really have to go over there and see what's going on. Then uh, Derwiner Schnitzel, that's their original location. And what's interesting is when you go to this Derwiner Schnitzel location, in Wilmington, it has a big plaque on it, and uh, it doesn't look like a regular Dermier stencil, and that's how they first looked. Uh, Pete's Coffee, 1966 in Berkeley, and you go at that Pete's Coffee location, they've got a mini museum, and then we have Swinson's. You can still get the sticky, chewy chocolate. And then they're still there kind of with the building and the plaque. So here's a little bit, uh, that plaque I told you about in uh, Lodi, California. And then we have uh, Seas Candy. This is the only company product that is in my book that doesn't make sense. And I really wanted it to be in the book. And when I talked to my publisher about it, and she said, it's your book, put what you want in it, which I kind of liked that. Uh, Seas Candy, their very first store in uh, 1921 that opened up and uh, it opened up on Western, and there's the black and white picture. And if you ever go to a Seas Candy grand opening, you'll find that they'll bring out a replica of this Harley Davidson, and that was how they delivered candy back then. And today, the building's still standing, and it uh, last, it was for 10 years, a Tom and Tom Coffee, a Korean coffee company, that it's no longer, it's empty. But uh, during COVID, I worked on uh, with the Conservancy and got their plaque. Their building was uh, named a cultural uh, landmark, a monument, but they never had the plaque. And so I was talking to the CEO of Seas Candy at a, a grand opening, and he didn't even know the building was still there. And uh, I said, and the coffee place was still there at the time. This is about three months before COVID hit in that March of 2020. So it was about January. And uh, so I gave him some information and he went to the place and he ordered a coffee, he told me, and he talked to the gal that was working there. And he says, hey, I, I understand there was a, Seas Candy used to be in this building. And she said, what's that? And another gal came over and said, oh, that's the box with the old lady on the cover. So he felt he really needed to kind of change the whole feel of Seas Candy. So you see a lot more younger uh, uh, ads now in Seas Candy. But I told him I'd take on the project. So I did. And I got that plaque put up about six, eight months later. Uh, the historical site of the first McDonald's, there's a plaque there from 1948. Um, the building uh, is a piece of history by itself. Go inside. There is every Happy Meal toy imaginable from around the world. They have a bunch of plaques. They have 
toy things they've got they've got a lot so if you're ever in san bernardino it's a great place to spend an afternoon they've got the original malt machines that they used uniforms pictures things like that casa del tacos was what it, uh, tacos was what it was called and it's uh uh, Del Taco, and uh, this is in Yermo, California, and I suggest you uh, just drive past. Um, it's very windy. I don't think they serve food there anymore. Uh, I've been past about four times for different things, and uh, I think people are living in the building, but I don't think they're cooking anything. And it doesn't have any affiliation with Del Taco, except you can see the sign that says the original Del Taco. Still there with a replica building. So this is what's interesting is Fat Burger. Uh, Lovey that started it, uh, she called it Mr. Fatburger. Her boyfriend at the time uh, worked in the boxing industry, and he also uh, uh, worked on uh, building, making buildings. So he took leftover uh, wood and stuff that he had from job sites and built this little place for her. And uh, it was uh, a great place that stayed open 24 hours after the uh, African-American club stopped. They had a place to eat. And uh, the replica next uh, that you see now, there's a big building behind it because Lovey left a lot of uh, uh, money and funds to uh, uh, housing projects. And so that's low-income housing. And they created a little replica of what the footprint was of the original Fat Burger. So... In and Out Burger, that's another one, 1948. Uh, if you see right off the 10 freeway, the original location is the 10 freeway, but um, that little building uh, in color, you can see it in black and white. It looks like the same thing, but it's not. That's a replica building. The um, Even the sign, the In and Out uh, red and white sign is a replica. The original one is about a half a mile away at the one of the truck depots. But if you look at the black and white sign where it says open, right next to that, between that and the car is a cigarette machine. So you could buy cigarettes at the same time you're buying a hamburger. And on Thursdays and Fridays, sometimes Saturdays too, you can uh, take a little tour, put your car in the driveway, take a picture and you can go inside and act like you're working. And you can see the small amount of room that you had to, uh, uh, spend in or how many people would make the hamburgers and stuff gone but not from our memory uh, these are all companies that are gone that I list in the book we've got Sambos that's the original location and the original location is still there but it's called Chad's now and they're the grandson runs it uh, Sambos uh, a lot of people felt it was a race thing of why they closed and and I, my research finds a different story. So you can read my story. Love's Barbecue Pit. Um, there were a lot of loves around. And uh, that was the first place that I went as a kid that uh, they gave you a finger bowl. And I thought that was the neatest thing that you wash your fingers at the table after eating ribs. Then we have um, the Brown Derby I added in. And uh, the Brown Derby I also have in my LA Legendary Restaurant book. Um, and then we have Pup and Taco. And Pup and Tacos were all sold off to um, Taco Bell. And you can still see some Pup and Tacos locations and realize that they're a Pup and Taco. Pup and Taco was fascinating. The company um, did not have their buildings on large major intersections. They had one block off. They felt that by doing that, people would be stopped at the light and they would still be able to see that there was a pup and taco and they would be able to um, have less pay rent. Hmm. Drinking A&W root beer. Then we have a hamburger hamlet. Uh, those were, uh, they even had locations in uh, Washington, DC. Vandy Camps, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, that's a, 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 a drawing. And if any of you, Remember Fandy Camps and you love their baked goods. I uh, suggest that you go on Facebook to the Vandy Camps um, uh, fan site. I run that. And one of the old uh, bakers that worked there has been sending me the formulas. I've been changing the formulas into recipes for home use. So we've done about 12 or 15 of the cookies. So if you like 
the cookies at least, those are up on that site. And then we have Copper Penny that started in Riverside, California and uh, the original one. And it was also started by the guy that started IHOP. And these are iconic buildings. Now this is what I mean by iconic buildings. Before you get to the building, you know what it is. McDonald's had those arches. That was iconic. And uh, in and out the two lane uh, drive through, those were iconic. You don't see those much. The uh, longest running in and out two driveway is uh, in and out number five, which is in Pasadena. And uh, it's a historical landmark, I understand. Then we have um, Randy's Donuts, that's iconic, that building. Uh, Jack in the Box, the original ones were iconic. They were square boxes and Jack uh, in the box itself was a square box. It was just iconic, that box. And you still see some of those buildings that have been changed into other companies. Chris and Pitt's Barbecue, there's uh, uh, a number of those still around. And those are very iconic because of the faux wood. And then we have uh, the Vandy Camps and the... Brown Derby. Then we've got uh, Taco Bell. This is uh, Taco Bell number one. The building itself is in Irvine, California, sitting there tarped. Um, then Denny's, the boomerang, they called that building. There's still some of those around, but if Denny's leaves and puts on... Uh, now, go back to that first Denny's picture. Remember, if you took the names off of that building, you could put anything on and nobody would know anything? This, if you took Denny's names off of this and put on a different company, you would actually realize what it was. So uh, uh, it was a Denny's. And Pioneer Chicken was very iconic also. It was a square. And their, their sign, I think in Anaheim, the old Pioneer Chicken, the sign has the same outline of the stagecoach and they uh, have something else in it. So they do that a lot. Then the A-frames. A-frames, perfect building because you see it before you get there. Der Wiener Schnitzel, or Wiener Schnitzel as it's called now, I, I think it's fascinating that they put the price. Could you imagine he could never raise his prices if he's going to change the sign? That wasn't too smart. But um, the drive-through of uh, Wiener Schnitzel. This, uh, it doesn't say pup and tacos, it says pup and fries, because when pup and taco was sold off to Taco Bell, there were three locations in New Mexico that were all owned by a family, and they wanted to keep them. So what they said, they could keep those, but they had to change the name. So they called it pup and fries for a number of years. IHOP, another company, uh, Blue Roof, very inviting and uh, you still see some of those around. In fact, I saw two of them in Chicago area while I was there. And Baskin Robbins, there were a number, Anaheim had one like that also. And that's our story. Um, my next book coming out is LA Landmark Restaurants. Uh, it's, I'm calling it volume two because we had LA Legendary Restaurants come out. We, they keep playing with the cover. So Right now, they have Felipe's on it. Last week, they had Kohl's on it. The week before, they had something else. But that'll be coming out in the fall of 2022. And then the book after that will be Made in California, 1965 to 2012, because I couldn't put them all in this book. And uh, the publisher is going ahead with uh, Made in California number two. And the publishing date is 2023. I'm writing that one now. And there's all my contact. And that is my story. Uh, Tim Miller is asking, what about norms? Uh, what about norms? Uh, norms is in it. Yep. I just didn't have it listed, but norms is listed. And Nor norms has a, a few iconic uh, pictures. They... Uh, uh, they, uh, let's see, with norms, they have just started building more norms and making the iconic look again, which is nice. But, uh, but yeah, norms is in the book. I did not have a picture of the original norms, which was across from, but not the same time, but it was in Hollywood over uh, across from, um, I'm trying to think of Cinerama Dome. 
and uh, now there's a high rise there. The only picture I had, which you probably have it too, is uh, the postcard from there. And right. uh, that postcard has a little norms and you can see it. Even what's interesting about the, uh, I think, I feel, is the companies don't know their history. They don't have historians. They don't have any, like Norms, he said it was sold recently. And um, I said, do you guys have original picture? No. Nope. And what it also is interesting about the whole thing is, let's say, let's just take McDonald's. And I want a picture of the Golden Arches or, or one of their locations. Well, the company itself do not own the rights to those pictures. It's the photographer that took them that they hired and they only bought them for the ad or something like that. So they don't even have pictures of their locations. So I had to go out and shoot pictures in a lot of places for the book, which I thought was fascinating, you know. But I say, okay, uh, uh, in the chat, did I already mention rallies? I don't think rallies started in California. So I know there's uh, checkers is part of, uh, I think it was the same, but uh, I thought that was East Coast. So I, I never came across that. Danny's dogs, Aki dogs on Santa Monica. It was only one location. So um, you have to have more locations than one to be in this book. Um, during the, yeah. Um, yeah, I ate at Danny's or, or Aki dogs and it was, uh, they moved from Santa Monica, a lot of drug deals there, I heard, um, over to uh, ooh, La Brea or Fairfax, one of the two. And um, it was two hot dogs, pastrami, chili wrapped in a corn tortilla for under $1.50, something like that. Yeah, Norm's, um, I thought Norm's was fascinating, the whole story of their, their company, because they, um, somebody's asking um, about Norm's, um, or the Heritage Museum of Long Beach. Hello, everybody over there. Uh, Norms on Lakewood, south of 91 is going strong. Original ceiling lights, uh, menu practically the same. Every Norms is allowed to create some of their own menu items, and they all have their own butchers that cut all of the meat. So it's really a fascinating uh, whole thing with uh, Norms. It's, they're a lot higher in than I thought they were. If that makes sense, I thought, ah, oh, it's just a coffee shop like Denny's, but it, it really has a lot of, a uh, lot to uh, um, going on. There's so many locations that I could have added to, you know, and there were locations that I couldn't get any information or I couldn't get any pictures or I couldn't get any, um, uh, for instance, what was difficult with In-N-Out Burger, uh, their publicity department were, was great. They gave me six pictures. That's it. That's all you can use. Well, they're the six pictures that everyone's seen. So it's like, eh. and then if any of you have been around California, um, some of the founders were killed in a plane crash. And I wasn't going to say anything about it at first. Um, and then I thought I better do something because when you pick up this book, people will take one chapter and read it at the bookstore and or wherever. And if I didn't mention the plane crash in that one chapter, people won't validate the rest of the book. So I thought I've got to add it. So I sent to their publicity department the chapter before it was the death because all they did was say they died that year. They didn't go into detail. And I really didn't go into too much detail. And they said it was fine. So we, we went off with it. So we finished that. So, but uh, it, it's interesting that companies are guarded, but then they don't want to, they don't have information. So I kind of wish they would have a little bit more, but they don't. We're getting a lot of J Burgers um, on Virgil in Santa Monica. There's only one location, and Astro Burgers had a couple of locations. In fact, one of the Astro Burgers was owned by. Um, uh, or managed by the guys that started Farmer Boys, and that'll be in the next book, the Torrance location. So, um, but uh, yeah, a lot of you are asking uh, items that started past 65, and that'll be in the next book. Um, 
when you're writing the book and you're you're figuring out what places to go with, you have to um, hope you can get a lot of information because you need a couple good substantial pages. Um, and then the publisher pulls things out. There was, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the ice cream uh, uh, company that, um, oh, I forget what it's called, but that was pulled out. Um, so, so Tim Miller wants to know, uh, what are some of my favorites that are gone that miss the most? Probably Swinson's ice cream. And when I do go up to San Francisco and I eat it, um, and I have a great story about um, uh, Eisenhower's daughter being up there and getting kicked off of the cable car because she had an ice cream cone. And uh, she had to uh, get off the cable car, her and her fiance at the time. Um, but um, I would say Swinson's. Uh, but back to my favorites that are gone. Uh, I really liked Pup and Taco had this uh, taco burger that was taco meat that was really good. And it kind of reminds me, some of you probably, unless you go through the Inland Empire, Baker's. Uh, Baker's is a chain that uh, they gave me just a little information. And I said, could I have a picture of the owners now? And they said, no. So, and it's the the kids that own it. So it's really interesting when when you're trying to tell them the world the story of them but i'm not bashing or anything like the la legendary restaurant book i did have a little bit of smut here and there in it because that's what was happening in the 30s and 40s with the, these locations and uh so with this book it was more of chains that started in california not single locations that stars went to and i really kind of watched um and wanted the feel of every chapter to be a continuation of their website, you could say. So it's kind of how I was going with it. So. George, I have a question for you, mm -hmm. uh, and you have you have sort of touched on it already a little bit, yeah. but but um, like two things: the the research process, yeah. the information that you can get from the companies, and you mentioned they sometimes they don't have their own history, yeah. uh, and uh, have they been cooperative? I remember from the I remember from the last presentation about the book, you had some kind of interesting stories with uh, the people that didn't really want to be involved, and then you had other other owners that just opened up and gave oh, you yeah. everything that you need. Do you have some fun stories from this book? <laughs> you want me to tell you, you can that you can share? <laughs> well, I share everything. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I need a good lawyer, though, if anybody knows one. But um, no, it's, um, for instance, Pink's hot dogs. Uh, Richard Pink answered the phone. I said, first, what I do is I figure out all the companies I'm going to do. Then I have to find out who to contact. Good luck trying to figure that out. I, uh, you, you can Google just so much, but that doesn't tell you everything. And does the company have a PR agency? For instance, Seas Candy, oh, there's four companies, Seas at the time. Seas, Denny's, there were three more. They all had the same PR company, which I thought was fascinating. So you get to know somebody in the PR agency and you hope they'll give you information. So that's what I'm working on right now on, on part two of the book. Um, for instance, a Hoff's Hut in Long Beach, and they own Lucille's Barbecue. They, uh, I, I sent them a letter. I finally found out who I should talk to, someone in their corporate offices. Send them a, le uh, um, a letter and uh, don't hear back. I finally call them. I get the person on the phone. She says, oh, we'll give you anything you want. Well, four months later, still nothing. And I've emailed, emailed, emailed. So I had to drop them. So, um, uh, and Wendy Hughes just said, the Hat Historical Restaurant is on Route 66 in Barstow. Um, the Hat started in Alhambra, I believe it is. And they're supposed to be in the next book, but I can't get anyone to talk to me. And I need more than what 
is out there about the hat. I want to know who owns it now, things like that. Um, uh, are they going to go nationwide? So it's really difficult. Uh, Michael says ships with toasters at every at each seat. There's a few companies that did the toasters. Um, uh, okay, back to Wendy saying, talk to a real estate person who can get the tax records. Um, I get, I can get um, uh, ABC, alcohol beverage control records, which I have. Still, even if you have the person's name, they won't talk to you. You can't do a whole lot about it. And I thought with now two books on history, going to the third book on history, and we've had stories in every newspaper from the New York Times to the LA Times. Um, I've been on almost every television show except the Today Show. Um, and I've hit a lot of people and a lot of information, but there's some that just don't want to be bothered. So I can't tell their story. So that's kind of how it is. Uh, I try my best. I, I have deadlines. Um, I've got, um, uh, um, I'm trying to think of, oh, uh, Bobby Green, that is part of the uh, uh, 1933 group. Um, Formosa Cafe was in my LA Legendary Restaurant book. My LA um, Landmark book will have two of his new locations. He gave me anything and everything I wanted. Felipe's, anything and everything. We all, in California, we have this thing with Felipe's versus Kohl's. Kohl's, I still haven't talked to them, but I got the, I created the chapter without them because there was enough information because they were such an old, old company and how they started. And, um, but to this day, Kohl's, I, I've called them, I've gotten, uh, and they're called, uh, I'm trying to think of their company now, they changed the company name. But um, yeah, I know COVID did things, but it's interesting. Felipe's, they give me the world, but Cole's nothing. So not much I can do. Um, Christian keeps saying the doghouse on Alvarado and third and sixth and Rampart. The doghouse. There's so many hot dog places. In fact, um, Tale of the Pup is coming back, and that's part of uh, Bobby Green, the 1933 group, and they're in the next book because it's not a chain. And um, in that story, I talk about the doghouse in that. Uh, Gary wants to know, why do I feel some companies are reluctant to share their history? They don't know it. Oh, here's some dirt. You guys want to hear dirt? <laughs> I think my mom's still on the call, so I better be good. No. Um, I thought it was fascinating. I was researching a location. I'm not going to tell you the location, um, but um, and uh, about 10 years before the restaurant went into business, he was on the front page of the LA Times three times for scandalous things. Uh, one was uh, he had a girlfriend, he uh, allegedly, but he went to jail for two years. So I guess it was true raped her, uh, beat her up, and then he um, was trying to get away in a car, and he hit a police car at the same time. So there were all these things, and it was all over the newspapers, 1945, maybe. And uh, so it was pretty sad. So his son runs the restaurant now. Oh, plus, another woman and his sister opened the restaurant up. So there's three people in the family that opened the restaurant. And in the newspaper, the uh, back then, the uh, restaurant or uh, reviewer of the LA uh, Express newspaper uh, talked about their new daughter that they adopted and her name. So now we flash back to today. All these people are dead, except their son isn't. And I'm talking to the publicist and I said, I'm not going to write this, but I'm just curious. Do you know about, here's the newspaper articles of his father. And the publicist was like in shock and said, he's not going to be too happy about this. And I said, I'm not going to write about it. You know, I'm, I'm just 
asking questions. And so he did not know his dad had done all this stuff. He didn't know that he has an adopted sister somewhere. I mean, I opened up a bunch of can of worms and I think they were really get worried that I was going to uh, um, uh, say something, but uh, um, no, I didn't. And um, uh, I've got the newspaper articles if anybody wants them, but he wanted a copy of them because he just didn't believe it. And there's a picture of the the gal uh supposedly his girlfriend the one that he had the problem with and you just look at the picture it's 19 i think 46 47 and she's got this patch on her face and she's got this look Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it's just it looks like it's from a true detective magazine instead of the front page of the newspaper so did i ever meet elmer dills yes um uh, many times out at uh, ABC, and uh, I worked out at the LA Fair um, for 28 seasons, and he'd come out and uh, do some stories out there. Same thing with, um, 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 oh, why is his name? Um, there's oh, it. Yeah, it was oh, Hugh Hauser. That's it. Yeah, I did a spam show with him, so that comes up once in a while, and uh, Speaking of shows, if you guys are up at 535 tomorrow morning, I'll be on KFI talking about cheesecakes because of uh, uh, doing a lot of cheesecakes and things like that. And uh, uh, Heritage Museum of Long Beach, thank you both. Uh, email me sometime. I'd love to talk with you guys. And uh, um, let's see. I think that's about all. There's one, one more that Paul. Uh, Paul? Uh, no, never met Paul. Mm -mm. but there's a lot of people i didn't meet but i would talk on the phone and and do interviews and things like that but uh, a lot of people uh uh the la times and uh, the old herald examiner and stuff so but uh thank you mr tim miller for joining us i'll see you soon tim worked at disney with me yep and we have to keep la history alive and if any of you are not members of the LA Conservancy or, and the LA City History, you should be members of both because um, we do have to keep history alive as much as we can because uh, it's leaving every single day. <laughs>